Every home has a little man in a cupboard. And his door shouldn't ever be opened. I lived in this house for ten years, but I only discovered a miniature man who's no larger than a thumbtack pin a couple of weeks ago. You said that every home has this little man, but I've never seen him, you scoff. Well, I should hope not, but that doesn't mean that he isn't there. Most people are simply fortuitous enough to never happen upon him, and the little man is hard to find. You should be thankful for that. He loves all manner of lightless hovels, and nobody can say which one he might choose. Kitchen cupboards, bathroom cupboards, even cupboard cupboards. Cupboard cupboards? Well, let's start at the beginning of my story. It was a wintry Wednesday evening. Anna, my girlfriend, was staying the night. There was little to no appropriate food in my flat, apparently, so I was rummaging through kitchen cupboards to find a snack that she might enjoy. What goodies have you got at the back there, Kieran? Anna asked. Mold. Dead vermin, probably. I laughed. Have a look. In the farthest corner of the cupboard, I was unsurprised to find a sealed box of Pop-Tarts that had expired in... 2014? I smirked and started waving the packaging in front of Anna's horrified face. She squinted at the expiry date and grimaced. Nine years old, really? Bachelor pads are the worst. I'm sure they'll be fine, I jokingly insisted. Like a fine wine. They're better with age. Staleness gives them some crunch. I'm more horrified by the clutter in that cupboard. I suppose expired treats are a good sign that you're not gorging on snacks, but we need to tidy up your kitchen. Anna said. That sounds like a riveting activity for a Wednesday evening, but I think I'll pass, I replied, placing the expired Pop-Tarts on the kitchen counter. That was when I saw it. The cupboard at the back of the cupboard. The kitchen light reflecting off of a pea-sized, polished brass handle on a bottle cap-sized door. I could only imagine the concealed compartment had always lurked at the back of my cupboard, but I was absolutely certain that I'd never seen it. When I moved into the house and filled my kitchen with food, I surely would have noticed a cupboard within a cupboard. What in the name of bloody bars is this mess? I asked, ushering Anne to come and see. She ducked down and shone her phone flashlight into the tiny circular door. Anna snorted. It's either that or the home of a very, very, very small hobbit. How long have you been working on that prank, huh? I didn't put it there, I replied. With a childlike sense of wonder, I delicately placed the nails of my thumb and forefinger on either side of the brass handle. It was incredibly difficult to latch onto the whimsically tiny thing, and without any thought or care, I swung the door open. I'm not entirely sure what I expected to find, but it certainly wasn't another cupboard. Yet the tiny storage space wasn't what intrigued me. There was a small man inside. Now, to be accurate, Anna and I didn't really know that it was a man at first. Not a real man, anyway. He was a dollhouse figurine, but he was a quarter the size of a typical figurine. The little man was seemingly made of painted resin and sported a black suit with a wooden cane. Unsettlingly, he was facing the back of his tiny cupboard. Why the heck do the previous owners leave a creepy little doll in a creepy little cupboard? Anna asked, shuddering. Oh, we don't know that he's creepy, I chuckled. He's not even said hello to us yet. I pinched the figure's head between my nail and twisted him around to face us. He had the face of a conservative 1950s man. Slick back brown hair, clean shaven, disturbing smile. The little man seemed intent on delivering a sweet and endearing expression, but he simply looked crooked. I don't like that false grin, Anna said, squinting at his tiny face. And his eyes are just so... Featureless pinpricks, I teased. Spooky? Thanks for that. Well, you've settled it. No horror movie tonight. We're watching Great British Bake Off, Anna said. Suits me, I said, following Anna to the living room. Nothing scarier than Paul Hollywood. Halfway through the first episode, I leapt from the sofa and returned to the kitchen for a glass of water. Whilst my glass was filling up, I realized I hadn't shut the door to the snack cupboard, and when the glint off the little shiny brass handle caught my eye, I realized I hadn't shut the tiny man's cupboard door either. 
I bent down to shut both doors, but I immediately found myself eyeballing the little man with the purple bow tie. He was once again facing away from me. After twisting him to face us, I didn't return him to his original position. Well, I, I didn't remember doing that. Still, I shrugged my shoulders and assumed I must have done it without thinking. Suddenly aware of the overflowing glass of water that I left in the sink, I hopped to my feet, turned off the tap, and taking my glass back to the lounge, I realized that my sieve brain once again had forgotten to remind me to close both cupboards, so I crouched down to try again. I dropped my glass to the floor and it smashed to pieces. Then I came running to the room to make sure I was alright. I wasn't. His motionless body was still facing the back of his miniature cupboard. However, he had rotated his head to face me. And, frighteningly, placed his hands over his eyes. All that could be seen of his see-no-evil face was the smile that I, much the same as Anna, did not like. Is that the same figure? Anna asked, peering into the cupboard that had petrified me. Yeah, I vacantly replied. How many of these little men do you have lying around? She asked. This really doesn't seem like the mood of a date night, you know? Terrified and confused, I shut both the small and the normal-sized cupboard door. I told Anna I was suddenly coming down with a migraine and wanted to sleep. But in reality, I lay in bed for hours, failing to comprehend what I had seen in the cupboard. I mean, Anna couldn't have teased me by replacing the figure. She'd, she hadn't even left the sofa. The little man had moved of his own accord. On Thursday morning, I woke to the sound of a door slamming, and when I rolled over, there was an empty space beside me in bed. Anna had already left to go to work. Still too afraid to leave my bedroom after the unexplainable horrors of the night before, I closed my eyes to catch a few more ticks of sleep. Still half asleep, I hadn't even mustered the energy to open my eyes before something utterly horrifying happened. My right eyelids were forcibly pried apart. There, standing like a titan less than a millimeter in front of my right eyeball was the little man from the cupboard. He was no longer a statue. He was lifting my upper eyelid like a heavy shop shutter and standing on my bottom eyelid for support. I screamed soundlessly, too frightened to make any sudden movement. The insect man unsheathed the needle-sized blade from his cane. Unlike him, it wasn't made of resin. I realized that as soon as he plunged the narrow tool into my eye, I screeched until I felt my vocal cords might snap. Reflectively, I shut my right eyelid together, but the little man resisted, using his free hand and both of his legs to keep my eyelid apart. The little figurine persisted, piercing my eyeball. Despite the microscopic size of the blade, it was sufficient to inflict the brutal bursts of pain. But I was more terrified by my distorting and blackening vision. He was blinding me. Thwacking my eyeball aggressively, I eventually knocked the little man along with his needle onto my duvet. With not a moment to waste, I threw the covers off of me and bounced onto my feet, clutching my bleeding right eyeball. I scooped up my phone and sprinted out of the bedroom. Stumbling down the main hallway, I managed to flee my apartment. Flicking through my phone to ring Anna, however, I, I saw that I already had numerous missed calls from her. On top of that, she had sent me a wall of messages on WhatsApp. I stopped in my place to get things before work, and guess what I found in my bathroom cupboard? A fucking dollhouse door. Very funny, Kieran. I'm not mad. I'm actually impressed that you managed to orchestrate all of this. Bravo. Another cute little doll, too. Whoa. How many of them did you put in this cupboard? There's a different one looking at me now. This isn't funny. How are you doing this? It fucking moves. The messages end on that incomplete note. Looking at the timestamps of the many missed calls, I saw that they started a few minutes after the messages ended. Anna had rung me for a period of ten minutes until... until nine in the morning, and I left the apartment at five past nine. Heart beating in my chest, I feared what that might mean, so I slid into the driver's seat of my car, scorched rubber on my frantic race to Anna's place. 
It was only a five minute drive. I didn't waste any time when I showed up. I left the car running and I broke down Anna's flimsy wafer thin door with three well-meaning kicks. Calling her name throughout the apartment, I was haunted by the stillness of her home. Not a movement, not a sound. I bounded up the stairs two at a time. It was the faint sound of bumping and scratching within the bathroom, almost imperceptible. Shaking at the side of the open door, I held my breath and I stepped inside. No sign of Anna. I timidly peered around the side of her shower curtain. She wasn't in there, and that was when I... I heard another bump. It came from the white bathroom cabinet beneath Anna's sink. Of course, the one place I didn't want to inspect. After seeing her messages, perhaps I had... I had avoided it on purpose. I knelt on the bathroom tiles and fearfully stretched my unwilling hand towards the two door handles. In a rapid motion, like removing a bandaid, I opened the two doors. Unfathomable horror. I caterwauled at the gruesome sight within the cupboard. Tears streamed down my face and inhuman noises spilled from my mouth. I rocked on my knees and felt myself slowly succumbing to insanity at the maddening sight before me. Anna was, by the laws of some unearthly physics, crumpled into the tiny bathroom cabinet. It was an inexplicable, insidious, contortionist act, and his limbs were mangled so unthinkably out of shape that her bones had been splintered and snapped like twigs. The most horrendous part of the memory is that she wasn't dead. She was twitching ever so slightly, painfully gasping for air. Her, her face was even more horrific, and his eyes had been sliced repeatedly. They were little more than two bloody mounds of mush. She had been violently blinded. If I hadn't managed to fend off the little man, I imagined I, I would have met the same fate. I placed a hand on Anna's cheek, hoping that she knew I was there with her. She took her final breaths. Minutes later, responding to a noise complaint, the police arrived. As incriminating as the scene looked, I was spared the pain of prison. My brother's a lawyer, it's a small town, everyone knows everyone. Plus, witness accounts mentioned sounds of a struggle emanating from Anna's apartment about 10 or 20 minutes before they saw me arrive in my car. People believe the killer fled before I broke down the door, and, I mean, they weren't wrong. They just couldn't possibly believe the truth. And his parents held a small memorial ceremony at their house last night. And why am I mentioning this? Why, why isn't the story over yet? Well, Anna's father commented on finding something in a cluttered cabinet. A, a dollhouse man. The figurine was standing on a pile of old books. There's no minuscule door that I could have warned Anna's father to avoid. I mean, it was... It was too late. The little man was in the midst of a vast, empty storage space. He was looking away from us. You know to avoid cupboard cupboards, but no cupboard can safely be open. The little man can visit anyone, anywhere, anytime. He hides in every home. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you so much for watching tonight's video. And if you guys are not listening on the podcast, then I strongly suggest you check out Spotify. The Mr. Creepypasta Storytime podcast on Spotify is exactly what you see here on YouTube. Or if you're listening on the podcast, I strongly suggest you check out YouTube. The Mr. Creepypasta channel on YouTube is the exact same thing you see on Spotify. So uh, really, there's no reason to cross platform unless you just want to see more things or you want to see more of me, which you can also do on Twitter at Mr. Creepypasta. And as always, I want to give a big thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. That includes everybody who's been waiting for me to update my Patreon. And I thank you all so, so much for being so patient with me. 
But especially, I want to give a thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fenske, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Chance Burnett, Diana Kraus, Tristan Pelton, Acid System, Adam Garrick, Aaron Stormcrow, Ika Limchok, Amber Clark, Angelus, Atomorous, Bastion Beefcake, Blue the Enigma, Braden Morris, Broken Beast 320, Captain Scurvy, Caspian, Shelly J, Cory Kenshin, Cronut 509, Crusader Chocobo, Cryptic Nightmares, Curse Pox Primark, Dakota Lane Whetstone, Daniel Paulson, Darth Miver, Deleted Account, Dirt Diver 030, M, Esteban, Fester's Lampshade, Freddy Krueger, Gorag Tri Magazine, Grand Moth the Milky, Hades Nephew, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Harley, Himbo Jerry, Horseman Sec Time, Insanity Gamer X, Jake Cairns, Jesus Cornell, Jordan Humble, Justin LaFontaine, Kaylee Ambrose, Kiri the Sloth, Crazy Kid, Cryolinian, Lambda M98, Lisa Cottrell, Little Crow, Lord Life's Best, Lupita Galvin, Love You Eminem, Matt Bach, Melted Lake, Michael Allen Jr. Bashirs, Mike, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Nate Cull, Nico Kyle, Psychomo, Red Shadow Cat, Rob Like Sharp Things, Sam High, Sashi Sazaku, Seclude, Stricken, Tali Sue, Tater Chip, That Creepy Chick, The Ginger Bros, Turtle Man, Voice of Sand, William King, Xavier and Cheyenne, Yargul, and Zachary Graphius. If you'd like to join this list of names that I horribly mispronounce, then please head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, or you can always check out the names in the description down below, and I appreciate it infinitely. So thank you all on Patreon, thank you all so, so much, and to everyone, sweet dreams. <laughs>